friends, welcome back everyone, welcome back to another week, another edition of the Warty TV Monday number 11. I'm of course your live VIP, with me I'm joined by these amazing players, the people in the chat, and by my lovely plushies as well. Welcome, welcome one and all to your weekly open tournament, your weekly Monday Cup here, centered around the Korean and the European region. Exclamation mark B! in the chat if you guys want to have a look back at yourselves because we are here we are live we have our first series and spawning in the top left hand corner of golden aura we have the red zerg player it is wayne not radita and spawning in the one right hand corner we have spawning. we have the south korean terran player the blue terran representing streamer zone it is quanta here we go. And if you're in the chat, predictions. Predictions are now open. Place your bets on who you believe will take this series. Best of luck. Best of luck in the chat. As predictions are going to be open for the next two minutes. And welcome. Welcome one and all. It's good to be back here. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had an intense weekend. By we casted so much StarCraft. Uh, whether it was KSL. Whether it was Alima League. Going into, oh, uh, going into other events. Uh, Fire Grow Cup as well. Was very much so. Uh, very much so. You know throughout the entire weekend three day event so we had a lot of starcraft we had a lot of matches and now we are here we are back to continue that as well with warty tv monday into the pigasaur cup tomorrow as well into sel so we've got a lot more starcraft to come in the next 24 hours as always Bobby. as always uh, meanwhile, uh, Inu, uh, Inu is a Korean caster, and it looks like he may have a timed out here. So hopefully we can get Inu back in the coming matches. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Into the unknown. Smoke, smoke. So we'll be losing him here, and uh, hopefully we'll get him back later on. Hopefully, hopefully. Smoke. But uh, yeah, I'm great to see. I was, I'm happy to see these two face off. Actually, I don't think Quanta and Wayne have face off in quite some time, if at all two strong players in their own regions now they are facing off here in the wardy tv monday here we go of course wayne we were featuring over the weekend in fire Grow cup he did come as second place and i do recommend the vods uh, of the fire Grow cup it was amazing it was beautiful do check it out on youtube or even on twitch as well do recommend it had a very busy weekend likewise quanta has been busy with sel with the starcraft evolution league i'm a little bit surprised to see quanta in this tournament because he usually does not compete in starcraft 2 events he's mainly an a starcraft evolution mod uh oriented player so so great to see him actually competing here as well. I mean, it makes sense. Even if you're competing solely in StarCraft Evolution, um, well, StarCraft 2 is still a part of that, right? You still have to play the SC2 race as well. So competing in both and practicing and improving at both does make a lot of sense. And here we go. We'll see how they both compare to each other. I do give the edge to Wayne coming into this, but I want to give some faith. I want to give some love to Quanta here. I want to believe that he can take it to Wayne. Let's go. Let us find out. But now, Hatch Gas Pool. Stand the opener. Stand the opener here out of Wayne. Going for his third base as the drone is kept hidden here to keep it safe from the Reaper. Likewise, Quanta going for a Rax expand into a factory. Everything looking normal so far. Everything looking as it should. Reaper moves out, runs into the Lings, and will be zoned away. Actually, going to be threading the mineral line as well. He shouldn't get a drone. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Whew. I was close. <laughs> that was close. The Reaper is trapped, though. The Reaper gets zoned in, and with that, Wayne shuts the Reaper down. Doesn't lose a single lane, doesn't lose a single drone. Very nice defense here out of Wayne. He defends beautifully, and with that, he is fortifying himself back at home. Meanwhile, across the map, Quanta going for a third TC before Starport. Economic build. Is going to be an economic build here, going for that Starport after the third TC. I feel a little bit spoiled because we casted so much Nickrack over the weekend, and I mean, we just saw so much two base play, so much aggression. Now we can kind of revert to normal here and have some more macro base builds instead. We can calm down. We can calm down here. It also makes sense on Golden Aura. Golden Aura is one of the larger maps in the map pool, of course. It has a low rush to spike ground. Very defendable on two and three bases. So being hyper-aggressive on this map is a very difficult thing to do. So we're not really working in that direction. We're just macroing up, getting our third bases, droning, saturating, making SCVs, and getting into our mid-game. Here we're getting to Heli and Banshee. With this, we can harass, of course. We can ride for map control. Uh, nothing too major. It's just a really safe, secure way to open up here in this matchup as we settle in. Ah. Well, hello in the chat. I see Rowdy. 
<laughs> Good to see you. Noam Chomsky as well. Shema, Shema. All those in the chat. Good to see you. Oh. As the Hellions are moving out. Likewise, Roach Warren back at home. So Wayne is going to be opening up Roach here. I mean, again, this has been a common trait amongst many Zerg players. Just open up Roach just to be safe and secure and head towards the mid game. Head towards a longer game state here. So we are just going to be spinning creep. Mages are amassing. And again, this isn't really designed to, or this Hellion Force isn't really designed to get too much damage, just designed for map control. Denying Kree spread, maybe picking off a Ling here or there, maybe threatening some Queens. There are sometimes opportunities where you can try to bypass the Queens and dive into a Mineral Line, but it's a very risky thing to do, and I don't know if Quantas really want to take those kind of risks. As he's still being active, Lair on the way for Wayne. Get into his lair. Roaches are amassing as we speak. Hellions, they poke in, they poke out, they back off. And we have confirmation as well that it's not mech. I mean, Quanta, we have seen Quanta embrace mech in the past, but not this time. This time it is going to be a 3 1 1 setup working towards Stim. Still cloak Banshee. You no, know, still a pretty big investment here into the Banshees, but thankfully it's going to be Bio behind this. Oh, beautiful. So we are going to be settling in. Aliens backing off, double Eva chambers for 1-1 one, one upgrades, a fourth base on the way, Wayne just securing himself, and yeah, I mean, we've had a pretty passive start here to this game, I mean, a big part of that is because of the economic opener here of Quanta, now it can be active, Cloak has finished, so the Banshees can now threaten some of these bases, but Wayne should have spores, there we go, we have one spore in the main, we have a spore at the natural, we have a spore at the third base, the fourth is more exposed, but the Banshees are headed towards the main direction instead. And as long as the queens are able to keep up, they should be okay. The banshees can still potentially pick up like a couple of gas mining workers, true. Or even some transferring workers as well. Speaking of, they get one, they get two, they get three. There you go, three drones, not bad. Three gas mining workers full. Decent start here for Quanta. Likewise, banshees are also just a really nice supportive unit against roaches because if Wayne were to move out, so the banshees they can just get free DPS and free damage on the roach army. So you rotate back into the main. Up. Oh, Ooh, a bit of an overextension. One Banshee goes down. And behind this, we have a Bailing there. So this tells us that Wayne is not going for a purely Roach Ravager all in or anything like that. So Wayne, he's going Roach Ravager initially as a stepping stone to get into Ling Bane. There's a Bailing Nest. Uh, after this, we should be seeing plus one melee alongside plus two carapace. Likewise, we have the Hive on the way. That should be for one Ultras or, or Vipers, Adrenal, Hive Tech in general. Wayne is being quite, quite greedy tech-wise here. He's being quite greedy. And now that, we, now that we've reached the seven-minute mark, here comes the first move out, the first push. The Changeling does confirm. Wayne is aware. The Creep is looking solid here halfway across the map. What I will say is that Quanta, he hasn't been too active with his Hellions, so this creep has gotten, gotten quite uncontested. That's a lot of creep. Here's a lot of creep. Army sims in. Files, they won't quite connect. No Bailings yet. They're not ready. Quanta gaining ground. At the same time, Banshees, they do distract here at the 4th or at the 5th. Tanks do Siege. Hellbats morph in. Quanta, can he break down that 4th base? Trading well against the Lings. Roach Ravager's building up. Not quite close enough to really pile down those tanks. Up, oh, up. Oh. See, he's pushing forward. Does not quite get a Ravager, almost. Now, Vile's going to be going off. They connect with the first tank. There's one more tank behind this. And despite that, it looks like there's still just too much Zerg. They break through the Marines. They get on top of the tanks. Uh, Wayne chasing this off of Grieve, but looks like he does have enough, and Wayne holds. Wayne holds, his base is safe and sound. The Banshee, sure, it's getting some damage done at the hatchery, but there are plenty of queens that can respond. And Wayne, once again, he will force this back, getting on top of the tank. Files should shut it down. We don't even need the Files! <laughs> on the other tank instead. And Wayne, he just got away with so much earlier. He was able to freely drone up to four base saturation, up to 75 drones. Can now focus on Ling Main Roach Ravager, and now the Hive is done. The Hive is done. What does that mean? 
Adrenal's on the way. We have the Ultra Cavern on the way as well. So it's going to be Ling Bane into Ultras here for Wayne. And he's, he's perfectly fine. Uh, Quanta, that move out had to do more damage. Behind this, he is getting a 4th CC. So he's expanding. Uh, but the reality is he did have to get more there with that push and because he didn't now he's falling behind here He's lost map control. He barely had any to begin with is being active with a drop thankfully, but Oh my god, the tumor survived <laughs> Nice target fighting towards the end Tumors are get cleaned up oh, So we get the chain power bombs that event goes down Wayne now maxed out and the problem here is that I was gonna say that Wayne can shut down the fourth um, Because we're on golden aura, it is very defendable in four bases This third and fourth base is, is very difficult to actually push up these ramps Push into these choke points and break any of these locations if the Terran player is in position uh, That's a big if though <laughs> Quanta was caught on siege. There we go. Does get onto the high ground so technically, even though Wayne is maxed, it's very possible here that Quanta could just turtle and stabilize and eventually max out himself. I say possible because Vipers do complicate things, right? With the help of Vipers, then these siege lines aren't anywhere near as threatening as long as those uh, blinding clouds go off. So there are going to be some opportunities here for Wayne, but I appreciate that he's still taking. Spire is on the way. That should be for a greater Spire. That should be for Broodlords. Rude Lords should be on the horizon here. Do get the double jump towards the north. Wayne is keeping up. Likewise, dives on the main army, forces the pickup, takes down the tank. But again, cannot push up this ramp. Like this ramp is it's it's gonna be difficult to break. Nice power bombs. Shutting down one of the medevacs. Wayne once again remaxing, diving on the would be fifth. And uh, it's going to be difficult here for Quanta to expand. I, I mentioned about the four base setup earlier, and I stand by that. This fifth base on the low ground uh, with multiple angles of attack, with Wayne knocking down its frontal, with Creep already at its doorstep, it's. Uh, I will see. We'll see if Quanta can hold on. This is when the changelings come in and they plug up like the deeper wall. <laughs> up. Okay, Quanta noticed. Oh my god, it's the medic. <laughs> so medevacs are a little bit far forward. Wayne pushing forward as well. Wayne cuts one of the tanks and just shuts down the bio. CC does survive. Another tank goes down on the high ground. And this ultra switch here is going to be once again designed to kind of break these siege lines. Ultras, they can be very tanky. Especially when there are no ghosts or liberators. Speaking of... Uh, Ghost Academy is done, thankfully. But uh, we are lacking Ghost here for Quanta. Just drop towards the left hand side. Quanta still trying to establish that fifth. Yeah, it's getting there. Oh, as this space on the right hand side is looking quite undefended. Thankfully, there are some reinforcements. And the snipes go up. Now, when and if Quanta maxes out, that's when he can push. Like, Quanta's been stuck defending for quite some time, and that's that's just the case of the, the kind of game state here. He has to defend. And if Wayne throws away too much, and if Quanta takes a good fight and maxes out, then he can push. That is what Quanta's hoping for here. Is for Wayne to overextend. You can see the supplies are evening up somewhat. Wayne, of course, has a bank. 
Quant is getting there. He's almost there. Wait, he does go for that fifth race once again. Trades well against the bio. He gets on top of the tanks. Only gets one of the tanks, though. Nice snipes with the ghosts. Fifth base. That's getting saturated. He got it. Do you get the fifth base? Behind this, Greater Spire's on the way. Again, this should be for Broodlords. Wayne taking the fringe bases. I will not be opposed even to Wayne taking the base on the right-hand side. Just every base on the map. Backs off, getting into Corruptors. I mean, hey, there's a lot of medevacs, and finally Wayne is going to have some kind of consi consistent anti air. Love something. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Uh, corruptors, they get sniped. I mean, nicely done here by Quanta, and Quanta, he's about to max out. He's almost there. Do you think he's got maybe too many medevacs? We could refine his army a little bit more, but regardless, is maxed. Likewise, he could also do with a bit of a lower SCV count. Just for a larger army. And Quanta, he has weathered the storm. And now, even though Wayne has had map control the entire game, uh, one bad fight, Quanta can counterattack and Quanta can still win this. Oh, nice huggle! <gasps> And that does it. He does pull the trigger. Wayne oh, almost commits. Quant's able to pull back in time. Yeah, Wayne is one bad fight away from Quanta counterattacking and knocking down some of these fringe bases. And then taking one of his own. And is going up. Wall gets knocked down. Oh my god. Snipes go off and Quanta, he still holds on. Saves the mineral line. Corruptors on the way. There we go. The Brood Lords have arrived. And this is how you break this kind of position here. It's going to be with Brood Lord Investor. We go. How many Broods? Eight. Eight of Brood Lords here. For Wayne. Some frame drops for a moment. I got scared. Um, but Quanta expanding from here. Now that he's in his five bases. Taking a six base should be here on the right-hand side. Um, the gold is just so far out. It's so exposed. So there's still a fresh mining base that can be taken. Has been untouched. You are brutal to poking forward. There is Ghost Thor. No Vikings. Uh, nice line, two brutals together behind. Nice pick ups. Like those mining being denied here at the gold. Five more broods on the way. How many? Twelve. And we'll see if the ghosts can actually get on top of them here. The ghosts are coming in. How good are the bundles? Oh. They get two. Good EMP. Okay, very nice EMPs here from Quanta. 
Snipes the Overseers up. Oh, sniping the Viper as well. Like, how do you get on top of those broods? As a lot of ghosts are going down, they're here on the front lines. Oh my god, brutal connections. The ghosts, they go down. And without the ghosts of Brutalists, they can keep pushing. The change things just made it, made it really awkward for the, for the ghosts. They couldn't get away. I thought that was eight ghosts going down. Nice snipes here from the right-hand side. Snipes on the Broodlords. Quanta, he trades decently, but the problem here is that he still lost his economy. What was that? 15 SCVs going down. He lost most of his mineral line. Because we have 17. Up! Oh. Uh, there's no fungals. Just now coming in. Okay, there's gonna be two fungals available. Up! Oh. First one goes off. Nice seeing people. There's still one more fungal. There's still one more behind this. Quanta pulling back. Ghost. Wayne backs off. <laughs> this is live, not PTR, right? Um, the tell, the easiest tell if you look at a stream to know if it's live or, P or the PTR is the map. Like we're on Golden Aura, which is a current map in the map pool, not a PTR map. So yes, this is live. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be on like Whispers of Gold or Ultra Love or something. So at a glance, just look at the map that's being played, and you know. As Wayne is pushing forward, gets a turret. Jesus, how many Thors do we have? Okay, seven, seven Thors. Quanta finally expanding. Getting a sick. He's a fungal, but there's no follow up. No chain fungal either. A uh, neural just not being researched. Infestors left behind to get out of here. <laughs> we pull back. Uh, Wayne gonna commit here. Bailey's crashing into Thor's. Not the best trades here for the Bailings. The, the ghosts were behind this. Quante can push forward. Again, that was most of the ground army thrown away for Wayne. But Wayne can remax. He's remaxing with Lings. So getting back into more Link Pain. Now Quanta can push in. Going for the bases, going for the gold. Get the expansion. Up. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what we're waiting for is for Wayne to take these uh, more inefficient fights, and after that, after he quote unquote loses the fight, then Quanta can break a base. Then he can go and kill an expansion. But the ghosts are exposed. Where are the Thors? Wait, where are the Thors? Oh my god! The ghosts are caught out. Massive bungle. The Thors, they were still in the Metamax. I was like, where's the army? Uh, and just like that, uh, Quantum, he may have just lost too much. I believe he lost every single ghost. Oh my god. Yeah, zero ghosts left. Zero ghosts remaining. Massive bungle. And Wayne is remaxing. And Quantum, you cannot lose that much supply that quickly. It takes time to build up. Uh, that was the, uh, the biggest mistake here of the game for Quanta. That was brutal. Now is not the time. For those kind of mistakes. <laughs> From here, Wayne is remaxing on 11 Ultras. And 
And now he can just push in. Now he can commit. Though this curious Wayne, he lost all of his uh, Broodlords. All the Broodlords did go down, so now it's just pure Ultra. Pure Ultra, Patty. Let's go. Fester's coming in. They go for the Neurals. They catch out the Thors. A Fungal as well. And again, there's just nothing to stop this. There's only one Ghost in the army. And the Mass Ultra does overwhelm. Breaks through the base, breaks through what little is left here of Quantum's Force. GG gets called. And Wayne takes game number one. GG. GG, well played. Whew. Wayne does take a lead here in the series. Quanta, he was playing well up until a certain point. Um, despite not, not having map control, despite not really being too aggressive, he was just turtling, he was just turtling up, getting into that late game army. He did take some good fights, but alas, there was one big moment where he did get caught with his pants down and he got taken it. Well, I mean, it, it just it was over then and there. Just massive fungal. Caught every single ghost. GG. GG, well played. Wayne does take it. I mean, Wayne still had still had an advantage throughout most of that game anyway, with a massive bank, with entire map control. But uh, that did end the game then and there. GG. GG, well played. Now we're getting into game two on Oceanborn. Let's go. Is Wayne random? Uh, no, that is a graphical error. Hold on. There we go. But now we're getting into game two. Why not just get two Vikings? Um, I mean, that just... That doesn't really do... Much. I mean, there there are players that go into a more heavy Viking composition. But that just makes the Zerg player make less Ultras and more Corruptors. I mean, it just, it just adjusts the, um, the armor composition. But I'm uh, sure that is an alternate approach. Like, you can go for... A more Sky Terran composition instead, going um instead of instead instead of Thor basically going like Viking uh, Liberator. It just uh, forces a different kind of composition out of out of your opponent. But here we go. We're getting into our next game. Getting into game two on Oceanborn. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the red Zerg player. The red Zerg representing himself, currently teamless, but leading the series one to zero. It is Wayne. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have as well, we have the blue Terran player from South Korea representing Streamer Zone. It is a Quanta. As we are going to be settling in. And again, last game, Quante, he took a, he took a much more passive approach uh, to the game overall, which makes sense on Golden Aura here on Oceanborn. You can do something similar. It is a bit of a smaller map, and it can be more abusable as well. Um, but you can be very secure on three and then four bases. Um, you can wall up. You can create these show points. We have seen at many a 30 to 40 minute game on Oceanborn. I'm curious if Quanta wants to head in that direction once again, or if he takes a different approach. Uh, we'll see based on his opener. We'll see if he goes 3C again or for something different. I would actually say you could actually um, cut Oceanborn in half a little bit easier here on this map. It's uh, less open in the center. There are, there are more choke points that you can just wall up and wall off on. But we'll see. We shall see. But now, Hatch Gas Pool, save the opener here out of Wayne. And likewise, Rax expands out of Quanta.
Uh, meanwhile, Quante does adjust a little bit here. He does go Marine first. Unfortunately, the Overlord is actually further back. <laughs> uh, Wayne, he does not fully scout with the Overlord, does keep it here in the center of the map. So the Marine first isn't quite able to catch him. And uh, Quanta doesn't get the value that he was hoping for. So basically, Quanta, he's been quite greedy, quite risky as well. Quanta, there's no SCV scout. No SCV scout, no Reaper scout, no nothing. Quanta has no idea what the Zerg player is up to. If Wayne wanted to, he could have gone for a faster Roach Warren, could have committed into something more aggressive here. Um, but alas, he's playing standard, and Quanta won't be punished. He won't be punished for it. From here we can settle in and this is what we were waiting for we have confirmation that is a starport starport before the cc so remember on golden we had a three cc build which was very economic very mid game or very mid game oriented here without the third cc this is going to be much more aggressive this can lead into early banshees into early bcs this can lead into a hellbat push as well we have options with how we want to be aggressive and we have a confirmation fusion core it is going to be bc so a BC based opener here by Quanta. This tells me that his economy is going to be delayed. His third base is going to be late. That is true. But the plus side is, of course, battle cruisers. If this goes unscattered, this can wreak havoc and this can do critical damage. So it is a very risky, very cheeky maneuver here by Quanta. Rushing into BC. Uh, Wayne behind this. Ooh, going for an early Bailey Nest. That is a four minute Bailey Nest here out of Wayne. That is earlier than normal. He could just be playing safe, or he could be going for a Bane Bust. And uh, with a player that is skipping Banshee and going BC, BCs, they take a lot longer to make, by the way, a Bane Bust could be quite effective. And Wayne Gay is going for it. <laughs> He's going for the Bane Bust. Uh, as long as he can avoid these Hellions, he can he can pull this off. Can pull this off. Lings, they screwed around the edge of the map. Hellions are being active through the center. And Quanta, he doesn't spot this yet. He doesn't know. Hellies to go for a dive. Oh, they're going to get surrounded. Uh, brutal pickoffs here. Two Hellions going down. Three Hellions going down. And without any Hellions, nothing, there's nothing to defend. There's two Hellions. Two Hellions back at home. A couple more Hellions on the way. And Wayne, he's committing to the main bust. He's sending it. Rallying across the map. Cutting workers at 35. Two gases. And here come the main links. The Bailings are on the way. What is it to defend now? Hellions, they can trade quite efficiently against this kind of army, especially with more Hellions in production. So if the Lings line up, if the Bailings line up, then Quanta can defend. He can survive. Bailings are waddling in. They knock down the wall. Hell, that's more fit. Oh, no! The Depot is left down. The Lings, they flood into the Mineral Lines. Bailings, they crash into the Hellbats as well. And SCVs are going down. And that's that's going to be game here. I mean, that's every single worker falling. Sure, the BC will clean everything up eventually, but uh, that's 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 going to take quite some time. That's a big eventually. As all the Deepers are being shut down, back at home, Spores, Queen Production, that's all that Wayne has to focus on. He's droning up. Takes down all the Depots. And Wayne backs off. He backs off 29 SCV kills. Quanta is down to 18 workers, getting a third CC. Aye, aye, aye. And this one battle cruiser has a lot of work to do. <laughs> Let's go. As the BC moves out, the Lynx can move in. Good amount of help as the defender. Oh, that's a looking strong. So the game will progress. Uh, because of these Hellbats, I don't think Wayne can kill Quanta. Um, I don't know if these Lings can really do enough here. Yeah, as the Hellbats are ready. So the game will progress, and Wayne will have to saturate his bases, get into his lair, take up into a Spire. Yamato's on the way. Speaking of, there's a Spire in production. Queens are pushing forward.
Uh, he's going to be running out of transfuse. One queen goes down. Yeah, that is the power of two BCs. Second queen falls as well. Third queen falls. The home is the fourth. But there's a the teleport. Up. Oh my god. <laughs> Very clutch transfuse towards the end. Wayne, he does hold. He does preserve his queens. Uh, the spire is almost done. And Quant is going to be stuck at home. Should be stuck at home at this point. Roach Ward's on the way. Again, it's going to be Mech. And Wayne is aware. So he's switching into Roach Ravager Corruptor. And Quanda should not be able to establish this third base. I, I mean, even if he tries, like, that's going to be an opening for Wayne. At least should be an opening for Wayne. From here, both players are building up. Third base now being taken here by Quanta. It is in the midst of getting saturated. And as I said before, this is going to be a big kind of attack point here for Wayne. But now though, Wayne, he's just macroing up. He's macroing. He's up to 84 workers. He's soon going to max out in the next minute or so. Should be looking at max. And then he can break it. Just skirt around the edge. They head for the fourth. Drop just here. BCs, they can teleport away. Two teleports. You know, Wayne, he is taking up the station bit. That's going to be for the hive tech. For all the spellcasters. Wayne, he scouts. He does confirm the third. He is aware. At this point, it might just be too late to break the third base. It's still not fully saturated, but I don't know if Wayne really intends on fighting before being maxed. And Wayne is in the midst of teching. It's getting more Corruptor. Ready for that Greater Spire eventually. I appreciate it. Wayne going for the, going for the Gas Geysers. Oh, going in Fester. Sorry, going Swarm Host. Okay. I was waiting for the Roach production, but no, it's going to be Swarm Host instead. A little bit more old school. I mean, that is a way to deal with mech. True. Which means we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> like, Roach. Ra if, if we had a Roach Ravager max out that has a lot of dive potential, uh, Swarm Host take things a lot slower instead. So, uh, strap yourselves in. We're going <laughs> to. Let's go. Let's go. Species they get caught out again. Swarmers getting ready for their first Locust Wave. First Locust Wave has potential, I suppose. Locust Wave is coming in. The rest of the army is going to be committing as well. And he wants those VCs. He's going to get them as well. Teleports on cooldown. He gets one. He gets two. He gets three. Locust Wave takes out the hell at least. And yeah, GG gets called. Wayne, he will take the series. 2-0. to zero. GG.
Quanta tapping out there. He still could have survived that. I mean, he was still surviving that fight, but I mean, it was an uphill battle. He had lost so much in the process. He had lost so many SCVs at the start. What was it 29 SCVs at the start of the game from the Bane bust? Again, and we did mention as well that uh, Quanta was playing very blind. He didn't really have any map vision or map control. He had no idea what was happening. So he was just completely caught off guard by the Link Bane bust. Likewise, his own Hellions were caught out in the center of the map as well. So everything just went from bad to worse for Quanta. GG, well played. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wayne will take the series and will advance on to the next round. And now we can take a moment to have a look at the bracket and to catch up with all these matches that have been ongoing. Let's go. Exclamation mark. Be in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the bracket yourselves. 